Now, you all know that cookery is very much at my heart and I get to meet some fantastic people who also love to cook. One guy up here in the Lake District is called Peter Sidwell and what an amazing chef he is. He really is able to bring the best out of food using local produce and using his connections here. So without further ado, let's go over to Peter Sidwell and find out just how to make the perfect pizza. Making a beautiful pizza is really easy. It's simple and delicious. I'm gonna show you how I do it. So I've got a dough here that we've proved overnight. This is the true Neapolitan style pizza base. So it's proved 500 grams of double O pasta flour, seven grams of yeast, teaspoon of salt, and about 300 mils of water will make your beautiful dough. Wrap it up and leave it overnight. And that'll really develop the flavor. I always use double O pasta flour. It's a little finer and a bit more authentic. So we'll scoop a bit out there and then just take the dough. I use these dough scrapers. They're really easy to get hold of. And just scoop the dough out. A 500 gram base mix will make at least four pizzas, if not five, in my opinion. So, you can see the dough is really stretchy. That's because we've left it to prove overnight. So we're just gonna knock it back, get all the air out. Okay, so that's the dough back to where we want it to be. So now, just simply divide it into portions. So I've got a big portion here. So we'll get that to one side. Okay, cut it in half, and then we'll go in half again, and then I tend to just nick a bit off. That'll do as a portion. So while I'm doing this, I've got the pizza ovens lit and they're getting hot, so they're ready at the cooking temperature. It's kind of important that you get it that right way round. So don't sort of make all your pizzas and then go and light the oven. Get it lit or get someone to light it for you while you do this. We're here today in my cookery school up in Keswick. Um, and we have the pizza ovens outside. Everyone who comes to my school here falls in love with the pizza ovens first. And they're gutted if they can't use them on a particular course. So it, it is, it's a great piece of kit to have. A lot of fun, very sociable, I think. Um, I lived in Italy for a year, so I have had my fair share of pizza. Uh, and I feel quite proud of what we produce here and what we teach. And it's all about the right kit and the right ingredients. So I've got my dough here. All I'm going to do is roll it into a ball. And the way that we do that is a little bit of flour on your hand. And you start with your hands like this. Okay? And then you begin to roll them. And you end up encasing the bread inside your hand like that. So you start like that and you finish like that. And you end up with a nice ball of dough which is easy to work with. Okay? So onto the worktop. And just pop it down and press it with the back of your hand, okay? You don't actually start to use the rolling pin until a little bit later. So all we're doing is shaping it. Using our fingers to press it down and start to get the shape. So you're kind of getting ahead of yourself. You're conditioning the dough, getting it ready to roll out. I can see the uh, pizza oven smoking away nicely, so that should be getting hot. So we've kind of timed it right. So I moved up to the Lake District in 2000 and what are we now, we're 2017. I moved here 2006 um, and started my own restaurant um, and kind of just embraced myself and immersed myself in all the fabulous ingredients in the Lake District, but then started to blend it with quite a new approach. So I, I, kind, of, I kind of cook in quite a global style so I take dishes from all over the world and particularly a lot in Italy because there's a real passion for me there but I blend it with ingredients so this time of year I might be out getting wild garlic and that might find its way onto my pizzas it can find my way into all sorts of things so we've got some beautiful cured ham here like the Italian Parma ham or the Spanish Serrano ham but that's made out on the west coast of Cumbria so that kind of driving wind and rain that comes off the west coast helps those hams dry out beautifully. And it's, it's such an iconic product, but nobody really knows what to do with it. So we kind of, that's what we do here at the school. We just play with local ingredients and create dishes that sort of whet people's appetite and then they want to learn how to cook. So I'm just going to roll the dough now. It's really important that you roll it and turn it. And you can kind of see 
it moves about, okay? You don't want it sticky, okay? You want to be able to move the pizza base about. So keep flour underneath it, and that'll probably do. And what you find with a Neapolitan pizza is, the dough is just slightly raised around the edges. And if, if you haven't rolled it out to do that, just use your fingers and just run a little line around it, okay? And what that means is when the pizza's cooking, kind of the crust will just puff up around the edges and you'll get, it almost acts as like a little reservoir where all the flavors sit in the middle. And that's kind of how you make a true Neapolitan pizza. Okay? And then a little trick for you, okay, is fold the pizza in half, okay? A little bit of flour underneath it, unfold it, and do the same that side. A little guarantee to make sure that once we get the peel underneath, it does actually lift the pizza, because that is what a lot of people struggle with. Okay, I have got the most incredible pizza sauce here. I can't make better. This is made in August in Italy. Um, for the whole world, they make the sauce, and it is just incredible. So I've given up trying to make it as better than them because I can't get tomatoes all year long. Um, so this is just my favorite sauce. It's just pure tomatoes and a little bit of oil, and it's incredible. Um, and all we're gonna do is just sit it in the center. You can just, sm I just, it smells like Naples to me. It really does, it's incredible. So I always spoon it into the middle, and then back of your spoon, I was teaching my nine-year-old daughter this the other night when we were making pizzas. Back of the spoon and just work it round, okay? Don't overfill the pizza. If you overload it, it'll go really soggy and it won't cook the way you want it to. So there, up to that edge there so we can get a nice lift. Now, I am a bit of a purist when it comes to pizza and I love the Napoli pizza, which is salted anchovies. So I'm gonna take, not too many, you maybe want five on a pizza. So 12 o'clock, three o'clock, about five o'clock. And then, that's it, that's all you need. If you put too many on, it'll just be salty. Capers, I'm pretty obsessed with capers. I absolutely love them with all sorts of stuff. So a few of those dotted around. Some olives. Break them in half before you put them on the pizza. Because if you put them on whole, they just roll around and you'll lose them, okay? So just break them up. Okay, that'll do. And then mozzarella. For me, I love proper, fresh mozzarella balls, okay? I don't like the grated mozzarella particularly, personal. And all I need is half a ball of mozzarella per pizza. That is enough. From a, from a taste point of view and a health point of view, it's all quite good. Don't chop it, just tear it, okay? Put a piece in between each anchovy, okay? That's enough. That's it, okay? So that, for me, is almost ready to go in. Final touch, a little bit of black pepper, okay, and good olive oil. I like to finish my pizzas with basil. It works incredibly. But if you were to put basil on top of there and then put it in the oven, it'll just burn. So my advice to you is put it on at the end. When it comes out of the oven, tear it all up, serve it, be beautiful.